Well, it's prediction time, so let's see if I can get just a little bit closer than I did last year. Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly, and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. I think that maybe I guessed that Shuggy Bane had like the fifth most likely chance of winning, so not super accurate, um, but that was the last winner prediction that I did. I'm hoping that I do a little bit better this time around. I can't do much worse. Uh, so let's see. Also, apologies for the slow progress on my review videos. I started my graduate degree three weeks ago and it's taking a little bit of getting used to, but I think I'm more in the swing of things and I understand how much time that's going to take me so that I can actually fit in time for YouTube again. But even though I don't have those reviews out, I have read five of the books off the shortlist and I'm currently reading the sixth. So I do have a pretty good idea of how I personally feel about the books. I don't think that that's going to help me. Honestly, I've just come to expect that I won't do well in these predictions. And then if I do, I'll feel better, I guess. Okay, so the way that I'm going to do this is to talk through each of the books from the book that I think is least likely to win to most likely to win. And then at the end, I'll mention just like what my favorites are, because these aren't necessarily in the order of how much I enjoyed these books, but just like prediction wise, do I think they're gonna win or not? So the book that I think is least likely to win from the shortlist is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. Uh, there's, I didn't really think that this one was going to wind up on the shortlist at all. So it makes sense that this is the least likely on this list for me. I actually did enjoy reading this book quite a bit. It's this uh, short story collection that covers themes of like death, grief, those two things. <laughs> oh, and fear. I would say fear is a, is a big theme as well throughout. But I really liked one of the stories in this and then the others were kind of like, yeah, they're good. Like I'm enjoying reading them, but are they like award winners? Not sure. I do definitely want to read the other um, the Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez. So I am happy that she was nominated for this award so that now I know about her and I can continue reading her stuff because I did like this book enough for that, but I just don't think that this is going to win. Next, I have The War of the Poor. This one is about religion, specifically the Protestant Reformation. And it, I just think that, it, first of all, it's very short. So I think it's tough to write an award-winning book in like 60 whatever pages. But also I think that maybe if it was written in a different format or laid out a different way, then maybe, or to be laid out the same way as it is laid out, but made longer. I just think that there's something <laughs> that's not working here. And it's on a more fundamental level, which is why it's so far down on this list. I think that it does talk about like what it says it's going to talk about and the part that I was excited about, which was this idea of religion really being more of a good thing for the rich people. Like they're getting more out of it than poor people, even though like the whole thing of Christianity is supposed to be that, you know, the poorest among you are equals and, but there's not a lot of equality. And yet there's this talk being preached over and over. And I think that that's something that's interesting that we can like dive into and everything. But this, I feel like just kind of scratched the surface. It had some good quotes here and there. And then that was kind of it for me. So I was hoping for more from this. Uh, I do respect that it fit what it did into 66 pages, I think it was. But that was really all that I felt for this. <laughs> and then for me, fourth is The Employees. This one was very interesting, very unique. It's about these humans and humanoids that are like crewmates or employees on this ship that's traveling through space. And well, is it traveling or is it just in space? Not sure, uh, but they are aboard this spaceship. And it's written in these series of like witness statements and they're all numbered and they're slightly out of order, like not super out of order where uh, from one to the next, you won't jump too far forward or too far back in the statement order, but it is still a little bit out of order. So that's 
a very interesting thing in itself. Um, I think that this book did like a really cool job of not like holding your hand through the story of it, but also making it really clear what the themes are. And uh, the big thing was questioning like, what does it mean to be human? So that all great. But when it comes to the award itself, I think this book is maybe a little bit too unique or too different and to, to win this award, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. So that's why it's this far down on the list for me. Okay, so now we're in the top three of the list. So at third, I've put In Memory of Memory. This is the book that I am currently reading. So I can't say completely yet how I feel about it, but the general feeling that I have, I think that it could win. I think it has a good chance of winning. Uh, it's a little bit of a slower paced book than the others, especially considering like it is the longest one, so it kind of has to be. So in this one, our protagonist, our narrator, she's going through the belongings of her aunt who has just passed away. This is in Russia and kind of learning more or like going through the pieces of history for her Jewish family. And so I think that there's like a lot that can be done there for me, like some sections of it. I'm really into it and some I find very slow and difficult to get through, but also I like that it changes formats throughout, like there are different areas that are told in different ways. I love when books can do that, so it kind of does feel like you're sorting through the ant's belongings as well, so that's very cool. But I, I don't know, the slow parts like are, are a big struggle for me and I know they're a struggle for other people. I've seen other people um, have a hard time getting through this as well, so yeah. I don't know, I, but I feel like it's got the emotion and it evokes the feelings that could be an award winner for this prize. Yeah, that's a good reason to be third, right? <laughs> and I will say that the books that, besides the top place book for me, um, and maybe just books two through five, were very, I was, I had a very difficult time organizing those into which order I thought it would be. Uh, so I, I feel like I might change my mind about this like immediately afterwards because I changed my mind like 10 times right before. But here we are. We're just, we're going to confidently go with it at second in what I think could win is when we cease to understand the world. This one I was so excited for. It kind of starts more in like this nonfiction space and slowly gets more into the human aspects of scientists and mathematicians and kind of like how they have these grand ideas but also can be like super specific and how thinking in that way all the time sometimes leads them into madness so there's a lot that kind of covers those areas however i think that it needed to get more into the human element than it ended up getting to by the end of the book uh, I didn't really feel like I connected with any of the individual stories or anything. So ugh, I feel like this could have been so good. And I know people have enjoyed this. So really what I'm saying is I think this could have been so good for me. And unfortunately for me, it didn't end up getting there. However, I've seen a lot of people really like this book. So <laughs> it might just be a me thing. Um, and I think that it is very unique, but not in a way that makes it seem too different or odd to win this award. Like the employees, I, I just feel like it's a little too weird, but this isn't too weird. But this isn't weird, it's just different. Yeah. <laughs> like how I just said I was gonna be confident about this and already I'm like, mm, I can't even articulate why I think these things. All right, so. Uh, I feel like it was probably pretty clear <laughs> what was going to be in the top uh, place if you saw my review on this book. All of the positions on this list I have shuffled around except for the top position, which has for the entire time been uh, At Night All Blood Is Black. This book I loved so much, I've made that very clear. It follows uh, Alpha, who is a Senegalese soldier fighting for the French army in World War I. It covers so many different themes, uh, but among them are weaponizing race, um, autonomy, uh, double meanings, or even more than double meanings, to words, to people. It's, 
there's so much in this that I loved and I can't wait already to read this book again. I know that I will read it many times over and yeah, it's just so good. <laughs> So not only do I think that this book will win out of all of these, but also I would be happiest if this book won, which kind of takes me into my favorites. So obviously At Night All Blood is Black is my favorite book from this list. Um, it's also so far my favorite book of 2021. So we are just in May, nearly the end of May. We're almost halfway through the year. So this. I feel like there's a good chance this could stick to be my favorite of the year for the entire year, but we'll see. Besides which, I also really liked the employees. I thought that this was very different, very interesting. I liked the way it was told. I want to read it again. Um, I saw somebody in the Booker Boy Discord suggest maybe trying to like read it in the order that the statements were actually written and just doing it as an order as you can. Some statements are just not in here at all. Um, but yeah, I think that that would be a cool and different way to read it. I'm curious to see if that would change the story at all. Otherwise, the other books were just kind of meh for me. Maybe in memory of memory, by the time I finish it, it'll be more of like in higher standings in my mind. I think, oh, The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. Like I said, I enjoyed reading through it. One of the stories I do like actively like and uh, I'm excited to talk about when I do my review of that book. But other than that, not not really a ton of excitement for me for these books. So so those are my predictions for the International Booker 2021 awards. We'll see how right I am, what what place I put the winner on my list of predictions. That's what I'm most curious about. Like I just want to do better than my fifth place guess. So as long as The Dangers of Smoking in Bed and The War of the Poor don't win, then I am going to take that as a win for me. <laughs> All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Bye.